for loop is a count control loop. A count control loop executes the code within its scope repeatedly a specific number of times. Let's take a look at this program. For i in the list of uh, these numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, colon, print the value of iterator variable is i. I'm introducing new terminology here, so please make note of it. The variable used right after for is called an iterator variable. A full execution of the loop is called as an iteration. When the program encounters a for loop, it assigns the first value in the list provided to the iterator variable and executes the code within its scope once. In the next iteration, the iterator variable will take the next value in the list and, you know, iterates once more. This repeats until we run out of all the values in the list. Now let me change the values in this list and show you what happens. Clearly, the iterator variable picks the values in the list sequentially and the print statement displays the value. Perfect. Now, I need to mention this about a for loop. You need not use the iterator variable inside your loop. If I want to print hello five times, I could do that by entering any five values here in the list. The iterator variable picks a value, the loop iterates once and returns back to pick the next value. In total, we would have five iterations, printing hello five times. If I like to print it 100 times, it can be very tedious to enter 100 values in the list. So Python creators came up with this very useful function to use in for loops, the range function. With range, you can specify the lower and upper bound values for the iterator variable and let it do its job. If you observe the displayed output closely, the iterator variable starts with the lower bound value, 0, gets incremented by a value of 1, and then stops at 4. You might wonder why it did not include 5, which is specified as upper bound. You need to be mindful of this whenever you use range function in Python. The lower bound is inclusive and the upper bound is exclusive. To demonstrate the potential of range function, I will show you a couple of examples. Here is a program that displays the even numbers from 0 to 10 in ascending order. Range function allows you to specify step size. You can write the step size right after specifying lower and upper bound values. I already mentioned that the default step size is 1. As we are displaying even numbers from 0 to 10, 10 should be displayed as well. That is why I wrote 11 as upper bound. The iterator variable starts with 0, so 0 is printed. Then it is incremented by the step size specified. So it will be 2. In the next iteration, it will be 4, 6, 8, and 10. If 2 is added to it, then it will become 12, which is beyond the upper bound. So the program exits the for loop. Now here is a program that shows how to display even numbers from 10 to 0, that is in descending order. We start with 10, end at minus 1 with a step size of minus 2. After first iteration, the iterator variable value will be 10 minus 2, which is 8. This repeats till we hit 0, after which we have minus 2, which falls beyond the boundary specified. 
Hope the range function is starting to make sense. Try to come up with few problems like these and see how you can solve them using range function. Alright, I will wrap up this lecture by showing you how to compute running total using for loop. First, we ask the user how many scores the user would like to enter. Once we get that number, we write for i in range 0 to num underscore scores. This will make sure that the for loop iterates num underscore scores times. After the program enters the for loop, we ask for the score, add the score to the running total, and then display the running total. I hope the examples we discussed so far gave you a good intuition about writing for loops in Python.